Let's see now. Two cups of flour. Got that? Got it. A pound of kumquats. Got it. Right, Chief. Shh, listen. And now a hat full of vanilla to give it character. You sure this is chemical experiment? Well, sure, why? Sounds more like girl's cooking class. Uh-oh, he's a smart one. Well, Bullwinkle, what do you do now? Bullwinkle was a mite embarrassed by not knowing the scientific names of anything until he spotted a chemistry dictionary on a shelf. Quickly, he opened it. Well, uh, how's this now? Three ounces of, uh, methylene bromide and a cube of, uh, diphenophosphate. That's better. You getting all this? And now a dozen, uh... Benzochloranes. Benzochloranes? But... Quiet. Do as he says. Now we'll just pop it into a hot oven for about an hour. Pop it into... No, not that! We must follow his directions exactly. Pop it in. So obeying Bullwinkle's instructions, the spies put their mixture into the oven. As a result, their laboratory instantly disappeared. While the only result in Bullwinkle's lab was... Oh, darn. Just another mess of chocolate pan dowdy. Hello, you receiving me? Hello, fearless leader. Funny they don't answer. But while Bullwinkle didn't think much of his latest effort, it was doing him a lot of good. For its fragrant aroma drifted out of the window and down the hill and eventually reached the sensitive nose of his best friend. Hey, smell that? Smell what? That delicious aroma. I don't smell anything. Cloyd, we don't have noses. Oh... I forgot for a minute. But I do, and I'm going to follow it right to Bullwinkle. And so over every obstacle, Rocky followed the smell of Bullwinkle's chocolate pan dowdy. It took him right to the house on the hill, but he didn't approach unobserved. Curses! Is that nosy squirrel? I must work fast. And Boris did work fast, for when Rocky reached the house... Gee whiz! Looks like I was expected. Do not turn back. Go on instead. Your friend the moose is just ahead. Boris shave. Ten feet to moose. Too far. Go back five feet. Mm. Stand here. Pull rope. But when Rocky pulled the rope, a trap door opened under him and the plucky squirrel dropped from sight. See? It pays to advertise. For a while, Rocky was certainly going downhill fast, but a few seconds later, he was really going up in the world. Farewell, you miserable rodent. Happy landings right in middle of ocean. <laughs> and while the balloon took Rocky far out over the ocean, the unsuspecting Bullwinkle was still experimenting, only this time with real chemicals. And as Boris approached the lab... You know, I think I had it for a second there. Splendid. Now, would you mind getting off my neck and back to work? I must be working him too hard. He looks pooped. But two famous scientists like Rocky and Bullwinkle couldn't disappear without somebody wondering what had happened, and it soon appeared that everybody did. Read all about it! Bullwinkle disappears! All police stations were notified. This scientist has the following distinguishing marks. A small mole on his left shoulder blade. Also a six-foot pair of antlers. The hunt for the missing moose went on in every state in the Union except one. When asked why, the governor replied, Of course, it ain't moose hunting season yet. But in most places, the search went on doggedly, and probably the most eager searchers were the two moon men. Gidney and Cloyd wanted Bullwinkle as entertainment chairman of a party in their honor. Their methods were very simple. They just went from door to door where their appearance met with varying results. I don't want any magazines, but I'd sure like to know what college you're working your way through. Good heavens, is it trick-or-treat night already? No brushes today, thanks. It's not a brush, it's a mustache. Hey, Mabel, looks like some more of your relatives again. This isn't getting us anywhere, Gidney. Just one more house, Cloyd. And Gidney's diligence was rewarded. That one more house belonged to Boris Badenov. Zounds, it's those lunar loonies. They mustn't see me. This is the last one, Gidney. My pods are killing me. Down here, they call them feet. Do you think we'll ever get to go to our party? Oh, sure, I'll bet that Bullwinkle chap is getting things ready right now. Party, eh? Natasha, come here quickly. And a few moments later, Boris flung his door wide open. Surprise, surprise, come in, come in. We thought you'd never get here. Welcome to Earth, darlings, and many happy returns. Cloyd, it's a surprise party. 
surprised me all right. Here are the paper hats. And the noisemakers. Delightful. Nothing like noisemakers to pep up a party. But those noisemakers were more deadly than delightful, for Bullwinkle's lab was in the room just overhead. Hmm, must be fixed in the street. Doggone, they don't make test tubes like they used to. Now you just make yourselves at home while I make the punch. It's my own recipe. Is it good? Good. <laughs> He's knockout. And while Boris prepared a lethal potion for the moon men, the balloon carrying Rocky was in a terrible storm out over the Atlantic. Suddenly there was a searing bolt of lightning, an explosion, and the shattered balloon basket plummeted toward the angry ocean 10,000 feet below. As the balloon fell, the plucky squirrel managed to work his way out of the basket and spreading his arms and legs began to glide toward the distant shore miles away. Boy, I hope I can stretch my glide that far. Unfortunately, at that moment, Rocky was being picked up by the radar antennas of the air defense headquarters. General Broadbeam, sir, we've spotted the flying objects headed straight for us. What kind of object? Well, sir, it appears to be a squirrel. A what? Yes, sir. Hmm. Probably a secret missile we don't know about. Well, we can't take chances. Shoot it down! And within seconds, huge batteries of weapons were leveled at Rocky and commenced fire. Loki smoke! They think I'm an enemy! Hey! Cut it out! I'm friendly! Look! I'm smiling! Oh, if there were just some way I could tell them who I am! Then the brainy squirrel got an idea and began to fly in a special pattern. Look, General, the object is spelling something out. Sure enough, the wily Rocky was using the smoke from the ak, -Ak burst to spell out letters, a kind of polka dot skywriting. What's it say, General? U S. Cease firing! Don't harm a hair of his head! That is a U.S. taxpayer! We need every one of them we can get! So Rocky continued gliding toward the shore, this time with an honor escort of jet planes. Meanwhile, at Boris's house, the spy was pretending to throw a party in honor of the Moon Men, complete with paper hats and noisemakers, while Bullwinkle worked in the room above. Uh, mind if I join you? In a corner of the room, Boris, who was really anxious to get rid of the Moon Men, was mixing up a bucket full of Mickey Fins. Oh, goody, punch. Boris, if Moose ever drinks that, he will be asleep for weeks. And we won't get formula from him. Well, here's looking up your ancestors. At that moment, Rocky and his escort were flying just a few hundred feet above the house. I can make it now, fellas. Thanks a lot. And the squirrel headed down for Boris's hideout. Wait, wait, a toast. Oh, sure. Gentlemen, the queen. You said it. No, no. Now we must break glasses. But we ain't drunk the toast yet. In my country, you break glasses before you drink toast. Well, if you say so. But people must get pretty thirsty where you live. Now, I'd like to give a toast. Of course. Uh, well, here's the crime. To, uh, to crime? Of course, that was a toast that Boris and Natasha had to drink. The results were immediate. Hey, she's gone to sleep. You fellas don't feel sleepy? Nope. Not even little bitsy bit? Nope. That punch sort of pets you up. <sighs> Nighty night. And Boris joined Natasha in deep slumber. Party droopers. At that moment, Rocky appeared at the open window. Bullwinkle, there you are. Where else? Hiya, Rocky. Come on, we gotta go back. Everybody's looking for you. Oh, that's nice of them. Okay, let's go. Come on, Moon Man. Our friends started back, but just as they left the house, heavy hands fell on their shoulders and a very official voice boomed. You are under arrest by order of the United States government. What for? We have information. There are two spies here. Spies? Who could that be? Pardon my pointing, but it looks like you two. Grab them. But as the special agent grabbed Gidney, Cloyd leveled his scrooge gun, and the agent was instantly frozen solid. Wait a minute. They're not spies. They're visitors from the moon. The moon? Well, that's a job for State Department. But what about those two? They look suspicious. Sir, you are speaking of our hosts. Oh, I'm sure they're all right. They're just a little punchy as all. Come on, Bullwinkle, we gotta get back to the lab. But what about Up the Creek here? We can't just leave him. Oh, he'll be all right. How long did you scrooge him for, Clyde? Only 50 years. 50 years? Kind of a long wait, ain't it? What'll we do? Hey, I got an idea. Listen. 
And so the next day there was a special ceremony held in the front of the National Security Building to dedicate a statue of Virus T. Creek, the first special agent to be scooched in the line of duty. Very few people knew that the statue was really Abde Creek himself with a coat of white paint to keep him in good condition until he became unscrooched 50 years later. And of course, the real stars of the occasion were the moon men. Everybody wanted to look at them. Oh, they're cute. And in the next few days, the whole country went moon mad. Women immediately adopted the moon man look. Beauty shops specialized in moon man hairdos. Pointed heads were all the rage. Gidney and Cloyd were given the key to the city. Delicious. They even made television commercials. And this is what the moon men looked like after only six weeks at Dick Fanny's. Yeah, we used to look like this. Never have so many been so curious about so few. And pretty soon the pace began to tell on Gidney and Cloyd. They couldn't even eat a meal in peace. Hello, Kirk. Hello, Marilyn. Hello, Governor. Hello, Carrie. Hello, Marilyn. Hello, Roger. Hello, Sophia. Hello, Gidney. Hello, Cloyd. Oh, this has gone far enough. And so one night Rocky and Bullwinkle heard a knock on their door. Come in? Why, it's the moon men. How do you like it here on Earth so far? It's so wonderful we can't stand it anymore. Look, I've got circles under my circles. And from shaking so many hands, look, sagging fingers. So we've got to leave now. Well, Poodaloo. You don't understand. When I say we, I mean all of we. You too. Us? How come? Well, we can't just leave you here to discover the rocket fuel, you know. But I was just now sending out my laundry. Oh, well, I guess they can forward it. Quickly now. And the two moon men marched our friends to the field where they had hidden their strange spacecraft. Get in. I don't suppose we could pay now and fly later. In. I didn't think so. The door slammed shut, and with an unearthly sound, the spaceship with our heroes aboard zoomed straight up. Its destination, the moon. Up and up the strange craft went, and then suddenly... What is it? I don't know. I'll check the fuel indicator. Is it empty? According to this, we owe it two gallons. Impossible. Stand by to land. With its fuel gone, the spaceship dropped quickly down, down. Bullwinkle, are you all right? Uh, I guess so. Is this the floor where we get off? It sure is. Come on. One moment. You can't scare us with that anymore. If we can't get to the moon, neither can you. You know they're right, Cloyd. You mean we're stuck here? Looks like. I might as well be scrooched. Wait a minute. You know what the rocket fuel formula is, don't you? Well, yes, but... Well, why didn't you tell us and we'll make some for you? Well... What do you got to lose? Well, sure, the worst you can wind up with is a mess of fudge cake. All right, but I certainly wish I knew what happened to our fuel. Well, if Gidney had happened to glance outside, he would have found out right away. For two familiar figures were scurrying off, carrying between them the fuel tank which they had removed from the Moon Men's ship. Well, Boris, we have done it again. I certainly have. We still don't have the formula. Who needs it? We got tank of the fuel itself. Now let's check timetable to see what time leaves next submarine. Meanwhile, back in the disabled spaceship, Rocky had just finished reading the formula for the rocket fuel. Well, we can get all the ingredients, I think, except this one. What's that? Mooseberry juice. Mooseberry juice? Heck, that's easy. Oh, not as easy as all that. There's only one place in your whole country where it grows. Where's that? Near a little town called Frostbite Falls. Frostbite, Frostbite Falls? Falls? You know it? Know it? It's our hometown. Yup, right here in Minnesota. Bullwinkle, that's Florida. Well, if they're going to keep adding states all the time, they can't expect me to keep up. Minnesota's up here. Where's Frostbite Falls? I don't see it. Uh, what's the population? Twenty-three. Here, better use this microscope. And while Bullwinkle searched for the location of the country's only mooseberry patch, 